Okay, now we're going to talk about the immune system, and we'll see that it consists of several uh, parts, if you will. What's called our innate immunity, an immunity that's always there, always ready to respond, and an acquired immunity um, that takes time and is something that builds up. <coughs> Excuse me, it starts with our external defenses. Of course, your skin is a nice barrier to microbes and things, and it's a landscape on your body that's relatively inhospitable to microbes because it's so dry. We also have um, mucous membranes in our um, nose and throat in which we secrete mucus that is expelled from the body whose job is to line the passageways of the, the, the nose and throat and to capture microbes as they get inside us and then we cough, cough them out. Secretions um, things from as simple as tears to sweat and oils from our skin can also have antimicrobial properties and be ways to rid ourselves of them. Um, and then we're going to, that's all I'm going to say about that, we're going to spend the rest of this part on these internal defenses and the acquired immunity. So it kind of starts with these phagocytic cells whose job is to uh, roam around the body, if you will, and identify foreign compounds and gobble them up to take them in phagocytically. And what happens is these cells have these things called toll-like receptors, which are proteins they have that can identify foreign compounds, foreign antigens, specifically on these uh, microbes and viruses and such. So yes, they roam around our system through our circulatory system and our lymphatic system. Uh, you recall the lymphatic system is a series of vessels that sort of collect the fluid, the interstitial fluid, the fluid lost by the circulatory system, funnel it through these uh, lymph nodes, which we have throughout our body, where there are a lot of these macrophages, these white blood cells. Um, they sometimes swell up when you're, when you're sick. Ultimately, this fluid is funneled back up into the circulatory system up by the heart. Okay, so you get a prick and you get, uh, this pin isn't so clean, you get some pathogens here into your skin and what happens is these macrophages that are present will quickly begin uh, ingesting these microbes and um, you'll also have the initiation of the inflammatory response which is a swelling that occurs at this cut and that's from these phagocytic cells rushing in here um, and um, you also get the clotting response and so the influx of all these cells and this clotting causes the inflammation and then they hopefully take care of this pathogen on the spot. Now if it gets into your circulatory system that's another matter and you're gonna have to deal with that. Okay so let's see here so here's that first exposure we were just talking about, and those antigens that are present on that pathogen will now be inside those macrophages. And those macrophages, as we'll see, can present those antigens to these things called helper T cells. And these helper T cells are going to be, uh, their job is to then stimulate cytotoxic T cells and also these other types of cells called B cells. And we'll see the B cells are going to be involved with this immunity. They, div they give rise to cells whose job is to produce a bunch of antibodies that we'll see that roam around the body and target foreign, this foreign pathogen, this thing. And also they give rise to memory cells, which is that immunity you have. They're always there, ready to respond when that antigen presents itself again. <clears throat> the T cells, their job is to go around and to find infected cells and disable them, destroy them. And you also have some memory of them as well. That again, if you're presented with this foreign antigen, these T cells will quickly kick into gear. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, we'll look at the different parts there. Okay, so on these B cells and T cells, you have these proteins embedded on the membrane, which are basically like antibodies. And they have what's called the constant region, which is very similar between them. But then they have a variable region, a section of this protein, which is quite different, has a unique three-dimensional shape. And that 
three-dimensional shape is geared towards identifying a particular antigen. Uh, the antibodies are the same way. They have a particular variable region and three-dimensional shape that will target particular antigens and they will stick to that foreign object that has that antigen and target it. And so here we're at this step right here in which we have this infected cell that is using this type of membrane protein called the major histocompatibility complex and it's what sort of grabs onto the antigens and presents them to these T cells here in the case of this helper T cell and here a cytotoxic T cell and in this case though it's not an infected cell but it's one of those macrophages that has gobbled up this foreign object and is now using its major histocompatibility complex to present this foreign antigen you'll see there's this class 2 and that's what you find in these macrophages and the class 1 are the type you find in infected cells in each case the uh, point is to present the foreign antigen. All right, all these uh, white blood cells, like other blood cells, are produced in the bone marrow. Um, ones that become T cells are these stem cells that have been transferred to the thymus where they become T cells. The B cells are produced within the bone marrow, but they all form from these stem cells, these relatively undifferentiated types of white blood cells. Now here's where the variability comes in to those membrane proteins and the antibodies. <coughs> Excuse me. In that what we do is we make use of the variation that's found in the genome and these different stretches of DNA which can code for certain portion certain series of amino acids that can form a protein are mixed and matched and put together in various combinations to yield this high degree of variability that we have in these surface proteins that are used as part of our immune system. All right, so we have these B cells with these different uh, membrane proteins that can identify different antigens. A particular antigen presents itself, and this particular B cell here has the correct proteins identified. It will quickly proliferate. And what we're seeing here is this part of the process over here, where the antigen itself can activate these B cells and cause them again to proliferate, make the memory cells and the plasma cells that will then produce all these antibodies that roam around and find the foreign object. <clears throat> okay, so when a particular foreign object with a particular antigens presents itself, you get a rapid production of these antibodies that are unique to that antigen, and that's what helps you fight off the pathogen. After the infection's over, the number of these antibodies decreases, but there's still some around such that if you get another exposure to that pathogen you had a you get a very quick response and allowing you to quickly fight off that that organism that pathogen okay so now um, we're going to talk about this side a bit more with these cytotoxic T cells so here now we have this again one of these macrophages that has uh, gobbled up a foreign object it's now using its MHC to present it and here these helper T cells are now um, that has the helper T cell that has able that is able to identify that particular antigen is now activated and it will lead to a production of cytotoxic T cells and also B cells a lot of these B cells as we see here all right so now whoops now these cytotoxic T cells that are being produced will then roam around and find these foreign, I'm sorry, these infected cells that are using their MHC to present the antigens, basically saying, I'm infected. The T cell will come along and it secretes these compounds that basically punch holes in that infected cell, thus destroying the cell. <coughs> All 
All right. And um, so, yeah, here we are again on this side, the humoral response. Um, macrophage presenting to a helper T cell, um, activating it and stimulating these B cells that produce the plasma cells that then produce the antibodies and these memory cells. All right, some things that we won't really consider pathogens can sometimes stimulate our immune system and allergens such as pollen grains can cause these cells to produce and release these compounds called histamines. And the histamines are the things that give you the runny nose, sneezing, coughing, the kind of allergic response that we have perhaps all experienced to certain degrees. And the goal is to use the, these secretions to get this allergen out of you. Um, this can be quite annoying, and so we sometimes take antihistamines, which keeps us from producing these things um, to alleviate those symptoms. <clears throat> All right. Um, now, sometimes the immune system can turn on us, and these are known as autoimmune diseases, when our immune system and all of its different components can begin um, attacking, if you will, or targeting certain tissues within the body, whether they're, it's our joints, in the case of rheumatoid arthritis, or multiple sclerosis, or Lou Gehrig's disease, where it attacks the, the, the nervous system, and we begin to have a decay, a breakdown of that system, and can lose control of certain parts of our body. Um, so those that's an unfortunate uh, occurrence. Okay, I'm going to talk about the excretory system next, but I will do that in a separate video. Thanks.